Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kisanas. This is really a follow-up episode, guys. Uh, there's a couple of things that I noticed that I left out and a couple of things that you noticed that I left out. So I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. This is a correction episode. We actually are missing some code that allows us to be able to do melee damage, <laughs> and no one caught that. Uh, but we're also missing some code that allows our animations to blend properly, and, and one of you out there caught that. All right, so let's take a look at that. Let's get started. Okay, so Nicholas Bland... Balanda, I probably screwed that up, but I'll show you his picture here, says, Hey, Kasanis, great tutorials, but I have a question. Where did you handle the vertical speed parameter? I don't think the animation is blending. Cheers. Well, Nicholas, you are absolutely correct, and thank you very much for catching that. So let me just show you right now what he's talking about. If you go into your actual character, your soldier, and you open up your player controller script, and you look through right now, we can see that we currently have everything we need to allow this character to jump and run, etc. What we don't have, and what we don't handle at all, if we go back and we take a look at the animator for this character, we never handle the actual blend speed associated, the vertical speed associated with this fall and jump. So our character is never doing anything besides falling or jumping. I'm not sure which one it is. One of those two. And that's it. All right, so in order to correct that, very, very simple. It's one line of code. We're going to add it right underneath the myAnim uh, set pool for the grounded. This is going to be our jumping code. And basically what we have to do is set myAnim. Oops. MyAnim. And we want to set uh, the float. We want to set a float. And basically we just want to set the vertical speed. That's it. We want to set our vertical speed. So quotations, vertical is it vertical like that? I can't remember. Yeah, vertical like this. Speed. Uh, we want to set that. And what do we want to set it equal to? We want to set it equal to the velocity in the y direction of the rigid body. My RB dot uh, velocity, velocity dot y. All right. There we go, guys. That will correct that error. All right. File, save. Next, we're going to take a look at an error that I caught, which was that we don't do any melee damage at all. Okay, so the next error that I caught was the fact that we never ever did any melee damage. If you guys take a look right now at your melee script, just open it up directly from your from your scripts folder. If you open up your melee script, you're going to have a line that says collider. Uh, it's going to have the array of colliders, attack equals this, and it's going to basically set up the overlapping sphere, which is great. But that's where I left it. I didn't add in any of this additional information. All right, so all of this section here is was completely missing from the code I showed you. And what that basically means is you're not going to do any melee damage. All right, so let's take a look at this code very, very quickly. First of all, we set up an integer i to equal 0, and we're going to loop through all of our attacked colliders. Okay, so we're going to go from i equals 0 all the way to the length of, or less than, one less than the length of our attacked. Each time, if the attacked i dot tag equals enemy equals equals enemy then we know it's an actual enemy and we want to do some kind of damage to it all right afterwards we are looking for the enemy health script we're going to look at our enemy health script and we're going to find the do damage script if i open up the enemy health script let's just go back and take a look at that as well uh enemy health enemy health. Let's take a look at this as well. Inside of our enemy health script, we've actually got our public function do or add damage, excuse me, our add damage function. If we take a look in here, we look for our enemy health and we set it equal to the enemy health of that particular attack. After we find it, we set it equal to do damage. Once we find do damage, we actually go in and we find the public add damage script and we add the appropriate amount of damage. Afterwards, we display the damage effects in the current location of the transform and the current uh, with with the with the rotation of the actual transform all right after that we close off our brace and we add our i plus plus to allow us to iterate through the while loop okay that's it adding this code right here will go through and allow you to be able to uh, damage things with melee <laughs> if you tried to play the game and weren't able to do it that's why all right one last thing I want to take a look at a problem with the jump. Let's take a look. Okay, so this last problem is very easy to demonstrate. A lot of you have noticed that sometimes you get extra height on your jumps, and we can correct that very easily. So let me let me show you what the issue is. If I hit play right now, 
and I hold down my jump button every right there every once in a while I will get extra height on my jumps right there all right and we don't want that we don't want that at all the issue with that is uh, the reason why we're getting that is because sometimes we actually have a Y component in our in our in our velocity uh, that is being added onto our jump. Um, you might actually experience this as well if you are running up a slant. Uh, for example, when we're running up the slant uh, at the end of our at the in our game where we can run up that ramp, uh, you might experience that same extra height jump then. All right, and we can avoid that. We can avoid that very very easily. First thing I want you to do is I want you to change in your soldier or your character, change the jump height. So right now mine is 200 and I'm going to set it to a much higher rate. So I'm going to set it to 700. All right. If I hit play right now, if I hit play, my character is going to jump infinitely high. Woo! And I don't want that either. But it's very necessary. That extra height can be very necessary. I'm going to open up my, my player controller my player controller, which I already have open right here, my player controller, and I'm going to add this one line. So right now, in your code, you guys have if grounded, when you're jumping, if grounded, and the input for the jump is greater than zero, then jump. Your ground is equal to false. You're setting your grounded anim, a pro like your, your set bool properly in your, in your jump to make the animation play. And what I'm doing is I'm going to add this one line. This one line of code says, uh, our, my RB dot velocity equals, and I'm adding a zero velocity in the Y. Zero velocity in the Y. So I'm maintaining my velocity in the X, but I'm setting my Y velocity equal to zero. My RB dot velocity equals new vector three. My RB dot velocity X, maintain it, zero in the Y and zero in the Z. The next line, add force, is exactly the same. Add my force in the Y, making me jump higher. I'm going to file, save this now, and when I do, when I come back over here and I hit play, and I hold down my jump button, my jump height is always exactly the same. All right, guys, that should correct your problem. I thank everyone, and there's a number of you who have mentioned that you had this issue, all right, and I'm really, really glad you guys pointed it out. With this corrected, you guys should have an awesome game. I really look forward to having to seeing what you've created. All right, everyone? Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.